Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the kitchen studios. Sorry, I'm having some dental problems today. Uh, they're definitely getting a hold of me. Of Modernist Pantry, I'm more of a hot mess than usual, Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin, the research development chef here at Modernist Pantry. And today we're going to talk about uh, something near and dear to my heart, um, the problem with fried food. Okay, so... A lot of the times when you have fried food and you allow it to sit either on the table or if you put it in the refrigerator, it will get soggy very quickly. So today we're actually showcasing Evercrisp and Evercrisp allows you to take any batter or breading that is your favorite recipe, hmm. remove 20% of the flour, add the Evercrisp. It doesn't change the flavor or the texture of your recipe. Well, it'll change the texture that it'll be crispier than normal, but it'll make it crispier for longer as well. So what's happening in a normal fried food that doesn't have Evercrisp in it that's making it kind of sog up? So usually a batter of breading will have protein. Sometimes it comes from gluten, it could come from other areas, sure. but that protein holds onto water really well. And when it holds onto water, it gets soggy. And when you add Evercrisp, it takes out some of that protein and allows it to be crispier for longer. So it, ha it means that there's less in your batter that can actually absorb some of that moisture yep. coming off the food or Absolutely. whatever like that. So you just replace it with, is it 20% for everything or is it? Yeah, so I like to say 20%, uh, you could go a little bit more, but we recommend 20% of the flour in your current batter or breading. If you're using a, a packaged breading, you can also add this to it. I like to go about 10% to 15% on that just because there are other things in sure. there. So you can add just a little bit less and that makes it go a lot longer too. So like all things, a little bit of experimentation if you're using a blend, but for the most part, a 10 or 20 and you're good. Yes. Outstanding. So what are some things that this is great for? We've got, of course, some uh, favorite fried food examples, but one of these things is not like the other. Yeah, so, I mean, we have, you know, basic fried chicken. We've got some nice tempura. And then in there, we'll show in a little bit of, of yeah. uh, one of the benefits of Evercrisp. But here, Currently something about Currently a torture it. test under... Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, right here is, is something that is similar to a fried food. It's a, it's a fried bread because it goes into a waffle iron. Oh. Uh, it has flour in it, which also has the protein. Uh, but we took out 20% of the flour in a waffle batter, mm -hmm. added the Evercrisp, and now we have a crispier waffle. This works great if you want to make some on the weekends and then... During the week, you can take them out of the freezer, yeah. pop them in the uh, in the toaster or the toaster oven, and then you have a, like a fresh waffle that you made and didn't have to purchase at the store. All right, I think I'm catching on. So when we talk about ever crisp, keeping things crisper longer, um, is it always for you know something like this where you intend it to be crunchy days later, or is this more of a does this have a more rudimentary or normal use? Yeah, so I, I like to use it just if in you're in a home setting. Yeah. If you're making fried chicken, you know there's always going to be a piece that's cooked first, put in the oven or any warming uh, situation, and then that one's going to be overcooked by the time you finish the last piece. This one, it allows you to cook in batches and keep them nice and crispy, all uniform. So you don't have to like pick your favorite family member and they get to eat it or do the awkward eat and shift thing. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can't, you're not going to feed one person at a time. You're going to feed everyone, especially if you're holding like a backyard barbecue and you want to do some fried chicken. Usually that's completely off the table. But sure. with this, you can absolutely do it and uh, put it into a chafing dish or something like that if you're doing a very large party. Now, not just parties, but of course, I think this is a obvious add-in for commercial kitchens as well, oh, right? Yeah. Um, and to that end, you see we've got two of the sizes, uh, the four ounce and the one pound, but Evercrisp is actually available uh, in the four ounce, the one pound, the one pound six part value pack, the 25 pound and the 55 pound. So we've pretty much got you from a, you know, an occasional fried meal here and there, all the way up to our 55 pound, good luck at the state fair this year. <laughs> Uh, value size. Yeah, so think about that if you are working in a, a restaurant kitchen or a buffet style kitchen. If you're putting out all that food, you want it to be consistent. That's a, such a big part of any food that you're putting out. And this allows you to do it a lot better. And one big thing about this that uh, a lot of people may not know is that it's actually gluten free. So it's made from wheat. Yeah. But it is under 20 parts per million gluten. So, so it can be considered gluten-free. So if you're making a gluten-free batter, you yeah. can absolutely add this. So I, even though it's made from wheat and a lot of people are going to go, ah, yeah. you're like, no, it's, it's such a, it's, it's because it's so processed out away from the gluten that it's, it's just, just a soluble fiber that yeah. is found in wheat that is processed out. Exactly. It's really good to know. It's going to be hard to explain to your guests, but yeah, no, it's actually right here. Right? Uh, gluten-free. So um, you get that for it. Also, while well, we're talking about it, also non-GMO and happens to be vegan as well. So uh, great for crunching up everything from gluten-free tempura. Just really go all out with it. 
So Mark, why don't you open up that box of uh, onion rings? So this is this is look. this is what I expect because if you've ever ordered onion rings to go, you know that by the time you get wherever you're going, even if it's to the yeah. table, uh, so they're I, soggy. I cooked these about an hour and a half ago, and I tossed them in the uh, in the to go. I say I've been here about 15 minutes since before we started filming, so this has been a sealed <laughs> container the whole so time. Let's just see if they're crispy again. Is... And, and while you're doing that, we can talk about some other products. So we have uh, other similar frying products that we don't have on the table here, but if you want crisp coat or batter bind S, crisp coat will allow for a nice crispy batter, similar to uh, the Evercrisp here. Yeah. But batter bind is one that helps with adhesion. So if you ever have a batter that falls off or a breading okay. that falls off, you add the batter bind and it'll help keep it stuck to the uh, the fruits, the vegetables, the, the chicken, the onions, whatever you're doing. Yeah, so so that way you don't have the, the complete fall offs yes. or the tear outs. Yeah, or, you, you know, eat an onion ring and the whole thing comes out and all burns the other, your face off. All the other fried foods, how I got this scar. <laughs> Hot onion ring. All so right. Crack one of those up. Just Here you go. Break. I'll let you do that. Yeah, oh, I'm going to do it. So yeah. do it. You've got here. prettier hands. Shut the front door! Oh. I thought you were gonna swear. No, I'm, but yeah, I so I it's crispy. For crispy for days is like what I like to say with this. Yeah. It just stays crispy. I can crunch a little bit more. Okay, crispy see, so days. no, onion rings shouldn't do that if they've been in the thing this and long. And they're cold, and they were in this. And yeah. You can even see the condensation on the inside here. Uh, it kept them crispy. All right, so that's no cheating. We didn't put it in the freeze dryer. Just ever crisp is that magical that look at it, you have fried food everywhere, man. That's crispy beyond crispy. So great for chicken, great for tempura, uh, a lifesaver in the waffle department. Yes. But I know you have a use for it that we've got over on blog.moderndispantry.com under the recipe section. So yeah, actually on on the uh, blog we have the fried chicken recipe here, yeah. this onion ring recipe, and then we also have a, a three-stage batter, which is flour, egg wash, and then breadcrumb. It's a very common way to do it. Yep. And you can add Evercrisp to that, and you can just look right on the recipe and see exactly where you add it, but that'll keep it crispier for longer. And if you're gonna put sauce on that, and then a little bit of cheese and make a chicken parm, it will help keep it crispy. Oh, so you don't get like the soggy chicken underneath the chicken yep. parm. It's not completely impervious to water, well, yeah. but, it, it will keep it crispier so you get that nice crispy bit under the sauce. So better fried foods, better parm, better tempura, more portable. Better everything that people love. I gotta tell you, like as much as we talk about, um, you know, the, the home cook or the restaurateur and commercial kitchens, I think in addition to all of that, state fair season's coming up. So if you happen to know somebody with a truck, uh, this is a great way to, you know, uh, it's a super easy mix in and now you've got the crunchiest, uh, the crunchiest onion rings in the whole fair. And I got one more, Mark, I'm sorry. No, I, no, no. I, I, no. I, I love this product. So I take a biscuit recipe. And biscuits, yeah. uh, they're really good fresh out of the oven and maybe in a few hours or even a few days they kind of get a little stale and, and not as crisp on the outside. But I add Evercrisp to a biscuit recipe which has high fat, it has flour, and it keeps them nice and crispy and makes a really nice soft crumb. And that's the crumble on the outside of the biscuit that everyone loves. All right. And that one, is that one over on our blog as well? Not uh, yet? No, I do have a recipe for it. Though. Right. So if someone purchases this, maybe we can send them to you. All right, cool. We'll definitely do that. And if you want that recipe, we'll be putting it up online. But if you want it sooner, just shoot us a message through Facebook or connect with us on Instagram. Ask for it. Uh, and you can be one of the few to get it. Sneak peek super early. Although, spoiler alert, it's probably a replace 20% of the flour with Evercrisp. <laughs> but that's the best part, because <laughs> if, if they like a recipe that they have it, or it's passed down to them, it's just gonna enhance that recipe. Yeah. So you don't need a new recipe, you don't need to go out and get anything else. You, you just purchase Evercrisp, you can change your recipe and make it last longer and be better. Now, if you're looking for a place to purchase Evercrisp, modernistpantry.com does not go down when you need it most, so you can come on and get it there. Uh, you'll also find some great recipes, both on the back of the bag and at blog.modernistpantry.com. Um, so you'll be able to experiment with it there. Uh, however you use this, be sure to send us your photos. Uh, share them with us on Facebook. Be sure to tag us on Instagram. We really love seeing what you chefs out there cook and develop with these products. Really interested to see what you're doing with this stuff because the entire kitchen smells like fried food and it's going to consume my every waking thought for at least <laughs> the next three days or until somebody slides me a damn plate. Thank you so much for joining us here on WTF where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Mark Frechette. I'm Scott Guerin. And I think that's everything we can say about Evercrisp right now. So hit us up at www.modernistpantry.com to uh, check out the product for yourself and learn a little bit more about it.